The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, Doctor, regarding uh, Bani Hashim, were they in charge? of the Kaaba by means that they were appointing people different roles to run the, run the, the, the town if it could be called the town or a settlement or by then was it a town it was a town wasn't it doctor yeah. by then yeah. so were they the ones responsible for appointing people different um, responsibilities or were they um, carrying them out themselves for example with regards to what water, water? Providing water to the pilgrims, were they just gonna <laughs> go themselves, or did they have that recognition by everyone that they appointed people to do these jobs? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. By virtue of their um, conduct as well as their piety, um, they were recognized um, you know, by the people of Mecca, if you like and probably others surrounding uh, the city of Mecca. Um, that they, they were unique individuals and um, they had this uh, status, social status, and this by, by you know, providing, helping uh, the needy, uh, providing food and water during hunger, um, when there was famine and hunger and people were desperate, they went out of their way, uh, if you like Hashim. <clears throat> and uh, so by default, um, because of the state, social status that they had gained and the respect that they had gained through their help <clears throat> to the people, um, they became, the, if you like, the custodian of the, of the cab. And this was uh, passed on from Hashim to his son, Abdul Muttalib. And he continued that. Um, so probably not, the, we don't have any evidence, at least we're not aware that they were doing, running the whole city. Um, probably other leaders of Quraysh were doing that. But they, they had a, a special status through their help and conduct um, towards the people, social help which they provided, uh, whether during hunger or during the pilgrimage pilgrimage season uh, when pilgrims used to arrive at Mecca to perform the Hajj um, they used to provide according to reports for their um, food and water <clears throat> which of course uh, they probably appointed people to help them whether it was with the water and the food and so on goes without saying but um, they were the driving force behind that and they were if you like planning it and making sure they provide, they uh, make these provisions for the, for the, at their own cost, because the reports say that Hashim used to kill his own camels to do that. Mm. Um, so they acquired this respect in the eyes of the people through their conduct, through their piety. They were known, they were uh, following a monotheistic religion, the religion of uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Um, so that added to their social status, to their respect, uh, rather than following the what had become the trend of everyone sort of setting up their own god, mm. uh, 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 an idol, sort of worshiping it. Uh, they still had that sort of special respect because they stuck to their uh, to their religion or the religion of their forefathers, which is the religion of Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam. All of these added for their standing so in society in the eyes of uh, the Meccan people did they, were there any other tribes who were 
let's say, powerful in Mecca other than Bani Hashim? Um, the power of Bani Hashim comes through their, as I said, through their status in terms of piety and helping others rather than any other power. At least we're not aware that they had armies and so on. So probably there were other, other tribes who were uh, more powerful in respect of uh, army or wealth or whatever. Um, the main focus of the of, of Bani Hashim, Bani Hashim, Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, Abu Talib, they had a lot of respect because of their conduct, because of their piety, uh, because of their help, either for the pilgrims or during famine time. So in a way, they were during time they, of hunger. They were recognized officially as they were they were custodians of the Kaaba. That was um, recognized. But with regards to leadership. Was anyone ruling Mecca, or was it left unruled? Yeah, there, there were uh, there was all these collect Quraysh, if mm. you like, which is a collection of a collective of various clans. Uh, they were, if you like, they taking care of the, uh, if it can be said, uh, a ruler. Uh, there wasn't such a such a, ru a single ruler who, uh, like a king or a or, or, or head of state or whatever, at that time. So it was more tribal rather than anything else. But the thing which stood out uh, basically was the uh, behavior um, individually and socially, piety and helping others, which uh, uh, caught the eyes of the people uh, as far as uh, Bani Hashim are concerned, as far as Hashim, Abdul Muttalib and Abu Talib are concerned. Where I was trying to get to is, uh, I've I've heard and read about um, Ben Umayyah, the claims that they have um, been written about them being related to Beni Hashim. I wanted to get an understanding regarding that because later on, during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet وسلم, but even more later on, after Imam Ali and uh, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, we all know very well what has happened between Bani Hashim and Bani Umayyah. When did this start and how did it start? This clash between these two clans. This, um, because Bani Umayyah have always shown that they wanted to be superior from Bani Hashim, as if they were always jealous from them. They envied them for their status. And no. w when did this start? Um, is it clear? So Beni Hashim, it's because of the standing of Beni Hashim, they became, if you like, automatically, uh, by default, uh, through consensus because of the respect that they'd gained in the eyes of the uh, people, whether the Meccan people or the pilgrims and so on, mm. that Hashim and his sons were really worthy of being the custodian of the Kaaba um, by virtue of their uh, piety, and the services they provided, f food and drink, food and water they're giving to the um, pilgrims, which is extremely important. If you imagine uh, at the time of uh, 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 scarce food and facilities and so on, and, and the, the kind of desert area of the valley of Mecca and so on, um, giving food and water is extremely valuable as far as the recipients. And of course, uh, it must be hard work for uh, uh, an effort and uh, as well as the investment that they make uh, as far as the donors are concerned, which is Hashim and, and Bani Hashim, for example. So, um, yeah, that was, that was that. You were mentioning about Omeya. So, uh, according to what has been said mm -hmm. and known, that uh, uh, Abd Shams, and Abd Shams was the um, nephew of Omeya. No, Abd Shams was the brother of Hashim. Uh, sorry, Abd Shams was the brother of Hashim. Mm. And that Umayyah... And they say that Umayyah is the son of Abd Shams. Yes. Is that true? No. Okay. Um, it, is, it has become known that um, uh, they refer to Umayyah as Umayyah ibn Abd Shams. Uh, Umayyah, the son of Abd Shams. And... Um, um, so it's been taken for granted that um, uh, Umayyah and uh, Hashim are related. And if you like, Umayyah is the, being the son of Abd Shams is the son of Abd Manaf. And Hashim is the brother of Abd Shams and the son of Abd Manaf. So they're all descendants of Abd Manaf. But, uh, and this has been 
unfortunately one of the um, notions which has paid, which has taken a lot of uh, well firmly established if you like <clears throat> um, but we have scholars and researchers who uh, publish their works and so on they say they have proven that Umayyah was not the son of Abd Shams uh, and in fact he was a, a Roman slave who was adopted who was if you like bought by Abd Shams and then he uh, freed him and he adopted him as a son but he wasn't uh, uh, the son of Abd Shams. He wasn't the. He had. There is no blood relationship between Abd Shams and Umayyah. Um, is this Beni Umayyah so and people like Muawiyah and so on are. They pride themselves that to say that we are from Quraysh. Um, Beni Umayyah are from Quraysh, and because their father is Abd Shams, Abd Shams is the brother of Hashim, and they're both. <coughs> um, uh, and they, they pride themselves that they are related to Bani Hashim uh, and because their father is Abd Shams, the brother of Hashim. But this is not true. Um, according to uh, some research work which has been done and a book which has been established by an expert in lineage, um, um, I can, if you like, I can show it to you. Please. Um, 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 the, the, the details that I've recorded. Um, in a book by uh, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Al Khaqani Al Najafi uh, in, in his book Ilm Al Ansab, the, he was expert in lineage. Um, he says that um, um, in refuting this notion that Umayyah is the um, uh, son of Abd Shams. He, he cites the communication between Muawiyah and Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali wrote a letter to Muawiyah. In response, Imam, uh, Muawiyah wrote back, uh, starting with this, or at least he mentioned this phrase that, إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ وَأَنْتُمْ بَنُوا عَبْدْ مَنَاف Muawiyah addressing Imam Ali says, we and you, at least we are, if you like, cousins, because we are both are the descendants of Abd Manaf. Abd Manaf being the father of Hashim and the father of Abd Shams. And uh, they claim that Umayyah was the son of Abd Shams. Um, but uh, Imam Ali re rejects that and says he wants to show the difference between him, Imam Ali, and Muawiyah. لَيْسَ الْمُهَاجِرِ كَالطَّلِيقِ وَلَا الصَّرِيحِ كَالْلَصِيقِ what does it mean? I'll come to that. Um, he says, um, uh, the migrant, those who migrated from uh, Mecca to Medina, the migrant is not like the Taliq. The Taliq means the one who's been, who, who's been set free. If you remember, uh, Ben Sufyan and all those people who uh, uh, fought the Prophet during the many campaigns they waged against the Prophet uh, um, when the Prophet if you like at the conquest of Mecca when he conquered Mecca without any fighting and without the, uh, any bloodshed whatsoever um, Mecca was overrun and overcome by the Muslim army if you like under the leadership of, of the Prophet and uh, Quraysh, prominently Abu Sufyan, the father of Muawiyah, who was the spear spearheading the campaign against the Prophet they were, very worried. they were very worried and they were concerned, obviously frightened, that he's gonna, the Prophet is going to punish them, uh, given the, all the hardship that they had caused, all the killings that they had <coughs> caused, killing the Muslims, including the uh, uncle, of the Prophet uh, Hamza. Um, but despite all that, the Prophet, who had all the power and authority in Mecca, he set them free. You are free, and um, I'm not going to impose any punishment against you. So Imam Ali says, Those who out of their free will migrated uh, from Mecca to Medina with the Prophet. 
uh, are not the same as those who've been set free after waging all these wars uh, against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were when they were in in weak position. Wala sarihi kalla sariq. A sarih who has uh, uh, um, exact, clear uh, lineage relationship, okay, which is like Imam Ali uh, being the son of Abu Talib, being the son of Abdul Muttalib, being the son of Hashim. There's no ambiguity about that. Kal lasiq. Lasiq means someone who's been attached, if you like, to the tribe, like Umayyah. Umayyah was attached to the tribe. He wasn't. He didn't have any blood relationship to Abd Shams. And um, it continues in here, Qal al-Qumi fi Safinat al-Bihar, in the book Safinat al-Bihar, the author says, reports from Kamil al-Baha'i, inna Umayya kana ghulaman rumiyan li Abd Shams. Indeed, Umayya was a, a Roman slave uh, uh, to, owned by Abd Shams. When he, when he found him clever and so on, and uh, uh, he set him free, but uh, he wanted him, so he adopted him as, as a son. And therefore, the Arabs at that time, uh, at the time of the Jahiliya, because he adopted him, they used to say, Umayyah bin Abd Shams. So that's how it became known that Umayyah is the son of Absalom, whereas he's not really the son. Was it something clear back then, at, those, at that time, at the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, Was it something clear or was it... Um, it's something clear. It's clear. Said, so basically after Ben Umayyah, they used that and they um, fabricated hadiths to create a connection with the, them and not, Rasulullah? It, no, I mean, just it just became known. They, they didn't need to uh, fabricate anything. It's just that here Umayyah, Muawiyah claimed that <coughs> and Imam Ali said no. And uh, Kamil al Baha'i says Umayyah was a, a Roman slave to uh, Abd Shams. Okay? He set him free and then he adopted him as a son. And the, the public referred to him as Umayyah ibn Abd Shams. Okay? Okay. Um, it says, فبنو Umayyah كافة ليس من قريش. Therefore, Banu Umayyah. The tribe of Umayyah, the clan of uh, Umayyah, the, in, in their entirety, they're not from Quraysh. They have been just, uh, if you like, uh, um, attached to them, and uh, because of uh, Abd Shams adopting that uh, Umayyah as a son. But he's not. There is no blood, blood relationship, if you like. So you, that's why Imam Ali alayhi salam, refers to him as Lasiq, <coughs> and he's not Sarih, whereas they are are, are Sarih. So. That is that need, that needs I thought that needs to be clarified. Yeah, thank you. It um, does. Um, it's very important. Yes, um, of course they had their animosity towards Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, Bani Umayyah. Uh, they are referred to in the Quran as Shajar al Malauna, uh, the the cursed tree, if you like. And the um, whole Quran. Yeah. Where? The Quran. Where? Uh, you mean which ayah? Yes. The the ayah is. Uh, Surah Al-Isra um, and uh, Ayah number 60 وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لَكَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ أَحَطَ بِالنَّاسِ وَمَا جَعَنَّا الرُّؤْيَ الَّتِي أَرَيْنَاكَ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَالشَّجَرَةَ الْمَلْعُونَةَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَنُخَوِّفُهُمْ مَا يَزِي فَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا طُغْيَانًا كَبِيرًا um, And the translation of that, at least I start from halfway um, I can start from the beginning is that um, and remember when we told you verily your Lord has encompassed mankind i.e. they are in his grip and we made you sorry and we made not the vision which we showed you O Muhammad but a trial for mankind and likewise the accursed tree in the Quran we warn and make them afraid, but it only increases them in naught save great disbelief, oppression, and disobedience to Allah. Um, as I said, that's Shajar uh, al-Mal'una, um, the, um, and the Mufassirin, if you say Tafsir al-Quran, they say mm -hmm. by Shajar al-Mal'una means Bani Umayyah, and um, the Ru'ya, the dream that he saw, the Prophet saw, 
was that uh, he saw um, monkeys going up the member of the yeah. Prophet sallallahu and yeah, that I've really distra distressed him. Um, and uh, this is the reserve. Uh, the reserve. It's a trial and tribulation. Mm. Uh, it's a testing thing for the for the people. So yeah, they had animosity to uh, to Ahlul Bayt Alaihissalam to the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt Alaihissalam, Abu Sufyan and uh, and his wife Hind. Uh, they had um, they were spearheading campaigns against uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and of course we had others who um, unfortunately um, showed animosity. Uh, to Ahlul Bayt salam, to the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam, you know, the first ruler, second ruler and so on who came, a third ruler who came to rule after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they had, uh, 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 they were staunch enemies of Ahlul Bayt, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima al-Zahra, Al-Hasan wal Hussein, in their entirety, they, uh, they, and they did all, they did all they could um, to um, destroy uh, that household, the Prophet, his household, his teachings and so on. Uh, of course, we can come to that, inshallah, in the future. Muawiyah was his job to pay, pay peop uh, people money to fabricate hadiths. And these fabrications have, have reached us today, to the extent that his uncle Abu Talib uh, becomes kafir, the parents of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa become kafir and so on. So they try to distort um, the hadith, they try to restore the, fact, um, the historical facts and we just, the least thing we need to do is to put them right.